Just take the whole engine out. Okay, so that's the inside of it. I don't know, a little bit of vapor rust. I got something weird going on back here. <laughs> But I've wanted a John Deere 318 garden tractor for a long, long time, and I've kept putting it off. And I kept seeing them on Facebook Marketplace all the time. And I was like, I need to get one one day, I need to get one one day, I need to get one one day. And then O'Neill Cove from Neil Cove Dig Drive DIY built his dream garden tractor, which is a John Deere 318, and it looks awesome. Now, we're not doing it up as awesome as Neil did, but it did inspire me to just go ahead, pull the trigger, get one, and have a little fun with it. And we'll take a quick gander at what we've got here. The person did say that it ran wind park. The reason they stopped using it is that the deck was rotted through. One of the pulleys failed and it kept throwing belts. He got frustrated and went and bought a new mower. And uh, deck damage confirmed. We'll pull her out here in a little bit and see how bad she really is. Honestly, the body's in pretty good shape. She's not rusted through anywhere. The hood, the fiberglass is good. I mean, it's worn, but it's not cracked, chipped, or missing. It's also not attached, but that's not too big of an issue. All the grill is intact, bent up a little bit, but it's all there. Side panels are there, pretty solid, little surface rust, but nothing crazy. Frame looks pretty good too. Tires are dry, rotten, cracked, but that's to be expected with the age of the machine. We got uh, we got this going on. Now this tractor is missing a couple things that make the 318 so desirable. One thing that's so great about these is they have a rear PTO kit that comes out the back. And John Deere made all kinds of little implements that went with this rig. Now there is a rear PTO. If I shove you up in there, you can see it. But it's missing the extension kit where it mounts to the back here where you can actually hook things up. Now one of the cool things about these, now these are kind of a glorified lawnmower, but they do have some features that make them garden tractors. And one of those cool things is you have brake steer just like you would on a larger tractor, which is pretty cool. And you do have some hydraulic functions as well. Two of them to be exact on the 318. And they both come out the front. Now these look a little worse for wear, so we may have to turn some attention to that at some point. But Right now, I just kind of want to see if it actually runs, and it does have the mule drive on there since he does have the deck on, which is pretty important because that's a key feature for some of the attachments you can run on it. And he did have the John Deere blade that went with it. However, the cylinder failed a few years ago, and he just put a winch on there, and he raised it and lowered it with the winch, which that's fine. If we do it, we'll probably try to find a cylinder for it, though. See the hours on here say 1500 hours. That's if the hour meter still works. The hour meter on that 755 says 718, but it hasn't worked since the day we bought it. He did install this switch to start it because he said the ignition switch went out. I went ahead and already ordered a new ignition switch for it. And he said the battery was bad. His charger wouldn't take it. So I just went ahead and picked up another battery. We'll throw it in and let's see if she actually does anything. We'll just shove them on there for now. Do the old wiggle tight and see what she does. All right, I don't know what this wire goes to. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's the ticket. All right. Let's check the old oil out of optimism. Oh, it's got some. Upon further inspection here the uh, this switch is not attached to anything at all I gotta figure out what he's got going on with this starter down here I think these were what ran to the switch for him to start it I'm not 100% sure we gotta do some wire tracing Here's one of the hood mounts laying here. So we got the hardware, we just gotta get it reattached to the hood, I suppose. That could be a little bit of work, but should be a good time. Starter's right down here. I just pull it all, all of this tape off here. It looks like we may have had ourselves a little bit of a short down here at one point. Let's see if I can get this sorted out and we'll go from there. Rigged up wiring is always a good idea. It always works. Let's start eliminating things in a way to kind of problem solve what we've got going on. So this is his wiring he had on here to run up to his switch. 
We don't need that anymore. We've got a new switch coming. Ow. So let's test this relay and see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. So just looking at this, I got a random lead going up to the ground. And I got the positive. So I'm just going to see if we can even get any clicking out of this. Because I'm betting this relay is probably fried if that's shorted out. So I've just got a negative going to it. I should hear some kind of clicking. And there is not. So that's the inside of it. I don't know, a little bit of vapor rust. I think she'd be good to go. I would say that was not functioning for us. So we will also go ahead and get one of these orders. got this clip on the front this is actually the exact same style that the 755 deck I used to have same way it attached this side of the deck isn't terrible it's got some weld repairs but most of my stuff does too it's got some artwork going on there. This has obviously got a bit of a hole on it. Kudos to whatever paint they used back then though. Most of the pulleys seem to turn okay and they don't feel, yeah, that one does. But this one is all cattywampus. Let's flip her over and see what's going on on the bottom side. Now I could be wrong, and maybe a fella just had a specific mowing pattern that he used. But I think we're missing something. I don't know. Maybe he was just very specific about the way he mowed. I think I might do some looking around, see if I can't find a deck somewhere close. This one, I mean, I think we could make it work. But by the time I got it where I wanted it, I think I'd be ahead just to try to find a decent used one. Don't get me wrong, with enough welding rods and scrap steel, a fella could fix this up and probably make it run okay, but definitely needs a new spindle on the center one since it's in pieces. These aren't great either. By the time I get done buying parts and spend the time welding this thing up, I think I'd be ahead just to find a halfway decent used one. It doesn't have to look brand new, but like it to be a little bit nicer than this. I like that when I flipped it back over, this part just stayed on the ground. It said, man, I'm done. You know, I don't want to be part of this mower deck anymore. Like I said, I'm just going to replace the harness and everything here. There's what the new one looks like. So there's a broken clip coming off of here. I'm assuming that that's probably where that relay bolted on like that. I'm trying to figure out what he's got going on. So that's two extensions with a wobble socket and a 14. Seems to be the answer for that. So that's on, the exciter wire is on. That had a different style connector on it, so I did have to use the old connector, but it looks done. Heat shrink looks nice, and that clicked right in for me. So now we just got the ground and the actual bracket for the relay. I'm not 100% sure it matters which way it goes. We'll just run it up like that because it looks like it's got the clearance for it. In theory, that should be able to just snap right in for us. As long as we're lined up right here. What we got? There she goes. Nice tight fit. I don't hate it. And I think I might grab a zip tie and zip tie these right to the oil fill tube.
So here's the new switch. It looks the exact same, except it's got one extra right here. So probably oh, some kind of auxiliary if you wanted lights or something. I'm not 100% sure. We could test it to find out. It looks like it matches up. I'll just hook her up here. So here's the good news. We turn the new key. The relay is working, which means the ignition is working. So that's great. But this fella right here isn't doing anything. Slightly concerning. It doesn't sound too happy, does it? But it does move now. Yeah, she doesn't sound very happy. Hey, you gotta get that starter out of there. We gotta pull the whole engine. That's all frame. Oh man. Figure out how to get that starter out of there. I don't know if you can tell, but the it's the starter spinning, but the Bendix isn't engaging, so it's not actually getting up to the flywheel. So I think we've definitely got a starter issue. I'm trying to figure out how to get the thing off there. This is all framed to here. We gotta pull the whole head off the daggone thing. All right, so the starter came in. John Deere designed this engine where you gotta remove the whole engine to replace the starter. It's a neat trick. Excellent design. Yeah, take the grill off here too. Got these half inch bolts. Well, that bolt's not a half inch, but the, the wrench is. Now to pull the whole engine, you gotta disconnect the throttle cable, the choke cable, or one of the other fuel lines and all that stuff. But I've seen some people where they get the engine unbolted and they just tilt it enough to get enough clearance for that starter. So we're gonna try that. The bolts for the starter are back behind this thing. I can see them, but I can't, I can't get to them. How does that shroud come off? So I ended up taking these one, two, three, there's four of these bolts right here where the drive shaft ties in on the back side. And it's actually pretty accessible and easy to get to since I've got this kind of tilted out. I'm hoping that'll give me enough movement we can get to that starter. I think this whole shroud has to come off because the bolts, hmm. Well, that's slightly different, which is concerning. And it's definitely not the same size. Well, it might still bolt up fine, though. Let's check it out. Where are the bolts for the starter? Is everything behind this shroud? That'd be amazing. That, that would be really neat. Behind the flywheel at that. This What a neat design. I was hoping that was going to expose like a magic bolt that holds this shroud on. Looks like there was one there. Well, we've assumed a new position. I did find another bolt for the shroud right there. Hidden at it. That's a neat location. Listen, we're going to agree if the starter ever goes out in this thing again, we're selling it. All right. We're selling it. And just looking at this, I'm pretty sure this is the wrong starter. Off that shroud. <laughs> we'll get this. Oh, neat. Well, I got a new one anyway. See? Perfect. You don't have to... Okay, all right. Right there. One, 
and then two below it. Is there a hole in the flywheel somewhere that gives you access, or do you have to? No, that probably make too much sense. Just take the whole engine out, okay? It's just take the whole whole engine out. And even with all that, still not a tremendous amount of access. I was hoping there's gonna be like a access hole in the flywheel or something, but there's just there's not. There's not, and I don't even know. Can I get the bottom one on a socket? No. Who designed this? Who thought this was a good idea? Well, this starter is way different. Everything about it's different. And I tried several different ways. She just won't fit in there. All right, so I got the correct starter that came in. The other one's sitting back. This one definitely looks like it's right. And hooked up to a jump pack, spins really nice. Bendix shoots out. Everything looks like it's supposed to do what it's doing. And I have like a super short amount of time, but I just want to try to get this on the engine and the engine sitting back down where it needs to go real quick. So it goes right here. We'll try to get this all mounted back up and get it put back on there and then get the engine spun and sit back down. Now it is worth mentioning if a fellow wants, you can sit there and rebuild those starters. I did take that one apart and I looked at possibly cleaning it and I honestly think if it was more accessible, I would have just taken it apart, cleaned it out really well, and put it back on. But as much as a bear as it is to get the starter on and off this thing, I think I'm going to be time and money ahead to just put a new one on. I'll save that one. I might still go through it and clean it and maybe drop it off. There's a local shop that rebuilds them and then have a spare ready to go. But I don't really want to take this engine in that a whole bunch. Not that it's a huge thing. It's just slightly time consuming. dirt till we find the right spot today has to be the day we've got the engine sitting back in i got to get it all reattached throttle cables and everything back on then we'll see if we can at least get the starter to turn the engine and if the starter actually works and engages the flywheel then we'll go through and actually try to get it running i don't have the engine bolted down yet and i'm going to use that to my advantage i'm going to go ahead and get the cable hooked up that goes to the starter i ended up ripping that ground island off on accident when i was taking the engine off so I'll throw a new one of those on real quick, like that. Nothing too fancy. Get that hooked back up, and that starter cable hooked back up. And then we can bump the key, and we should know real fast if that's gonna work. Just enough to engage it, you know? All right, got her wired up. Moment of truth, let's just see if she'll spin the flywheel. Well, that's interesting. It's on the flywheel, so it jumped out, but it's almost like she's jammed up. So I've got a theory on what's going on. I'm gonna bolt it down all the way. I'll show you if it works. So it was acting like a dead battery, how it was just clicking, it wouldn't have enough power to actually turn it. I checked the battery, and the battery is good, about 12.4. And I got to thinking about it, and followed the ground, and the ground is just grounded right here to the frame. And since we didn't have the engine actually bolted down, it would spin, depending on how I wiggled it and how it made contact with the frame. But now that we've got contact and we're all bolted down, we're good to go, bud. So I ordered straight from John Deere their little refresh kit, which comes with a fuel filter, air filter, this. Check this out though. Comes with oil and oil filter too. I would love to point out the superior packaging for the spark plugs. They just throw them in the box and let them roll around. Neat. Should sure I get the flow right? It's got an arrow there towards the engine. Spray a little lube on her so she goes in a little easier for us.
It looks like I broke, should be the fuel pump right here. Fuel comes in and out. And there's a little nipple right there. A little plastic feller like that. Well, that's inside of the hose now and, and not attached to that. So that's broken. I'm gonna have to order a new one of those. But we can still go ahead and see if she fires. We'll pull the spark plugs out, spray a little brake cleaner in there and see if she turns over at least. They're a little dirty. Well, that's slightly concerning, huh? Let's see if we're actually getting any spark. So there's a couple reasons why we might not have spark. One is that, well, the wires are just bad. They're not, they're not in the best of shape. They're just kind of old. So they could be bad. The other is we're not getting power to the coil. And the other one is that maybe the points might be messed up. So let's just dig through those real quick. I moved the battery so I got a little bit more room to get in on this wiring here so I can test my way. We just got it on the jump pack. So here's what I've learned so far. This is a ground for something this is a ground loop and that's not in the best of shape so i'm going to redo that with the butt connector and this is also a ground loop for something so these are cleaned up a little bit better and i don't think they're to a purist satisfaction level but for a shade tree i think they'll be just fine just got back from a four-day camp out at turkey run state park that's our second time going there we've done uh, the inn and we've done tent camping Love it. Top five state parks in Indiana. Highly recommend. Awesome, awesome place. Uh, my wife's gonna have a video on her channel, Wild Roots. Link in the description if you wanna check it out. But this thing's been bugging me. We got some more traveling coming up in the next week or two. I really wanna get this engine off my mind. But we got those two little ground connections just buttoned up a little bit. I took the battery and the battery tray out and found a few things down here. We'll point out, but let's start at this issue. You can see with the test light on the actual terminal, we got light. But when we come down to this wire, which is what feeds in to the back side of the key switch, I have nothing here. And I also have nothing right here on it. And all the way to there, there's nothing. So we're good on the actual terminal, but the connector and all these connections, even to here, are bad. So we're just going to replace all this real quick. Clean that up and while I've got it off I'm gonna go ahead and clean up whatever he had going on here and whatever he's got going on here he's got a lot going on let me get this buttoned up a little bit all right so I got this cleaned up a little bit I put a whole new battery terminal on there replaced it was a blue so I just added another blue wire put new ends on everything heat shrink connectors I'm not saying it's not a hack job but it's like a professional hack job so the good news so here's where the red wire comes down we we're trying to get out of the back side of this where I want it. But if I hit that part of the connector, I get power. I was getting nothing on this. So I just gave that a pull and there's nothing there anymore. So I got to try to dig that connector out. I'm not saying I'm proud of it, but it did happen. Let's see if that'll work now. I never can remember which way that goes in. Should have power to here now. Let's plug that into the ignition. And we'll see what she does. Nothing blew up. But I don't have any power coming into the coil here yet. It should be... I don't know. Let's, let's see if this makes a difference. Now because I was missing the internal components of the spark plug wires on this side, I did go ahead and order a new set. I'm talking about the part that actually clips onto the spark plug. That snapped off the end and came out with the spark plug. So I went ahead and ordered a new set. We'll throw those on real quick. And I left one spark plug wire on over here so that I wouldn't get them mixed up. So it's about eight o'clock. It's starting to get a little dark on me here. But after going through all the wiring diagrams, double checking, triple checking, I just went through and figured out what he took out. He pretty much just cut out all the safety switches, like the brake safety, the seat safety. You can see the neutral safety switch in there that's no longer attached to anything. And then he just directly wired in his PTO switch to eliminate the PTO safety. The guy just wasn't about safety, and that's fine. That shouldn't affect the running of it, the everything he cut out. He ended up fixing this harness and everything, chased it all, and still was not getting power 
to this wire right here, which is what provides power for the ignition coil, which is what gives a spark. Now, I even took this panel off and looked at the oil pressure safety switch, or oil level safety switch, or you call it, which is down in there. It was all hooked up. Everything looked good on it. And I went back to check one last thing. I thought, there's just no way. Traced all the wires back, made my own homemade little jumper, and I figured out the problem. So I got my test light jammed in there. You can see we've got power. I got the jumper going right here. So we got power to that. And now, you're not going to believe what it was. But we're going to make this connection up here. We're going to let it crank. You can look at the spark. It's weak spark, but the battery's getting weak on me because I've been sitting here cranking on it. So I need to take that over and, uh, and get it charged up. But let me unhook my jumper. Can you still see where the test light's at? Yeah, the brand new switch we ordered, it's faulty. The issue the whole time. And I'm not saying it's the whole issue because I think everything else we addressed was part of it, just bad connections and that type of thing. But the final issue ended up being the brand new switch. Go figure, right? That's okay, we're gonna get another one ordered. It won't be in by the end of this video, being as it's eight o'clock, I'm not gonna sit here and crank on this thing and try to get it running, just out of courtesy to my neighbors. So, We'll just do it now. A couple mornings later, just got off a shift. Before we uh, fire it up, obviously, I need to swap out with the new fuel pump. There's the old and new. They look pretty good together. I've already got fuel filter in line ready to go. Just got to get them swapped. Like everything else on this engine, it was kind of a bear to get to. There's a screw there and a screw there. There's this shield right here. I just bent it out of the way. There's this little hose right here you got to get on the back side of this fuel pump. I took the voltage regulator off and just shoved a pair of pliers down in there to hold the hose while I shoved that on. That's my plan anyway. Now we got that hooked up on the back with a little clamp on it. Just kidding. The clamp doesn't fit through the hole. I feel like that fuel pump was probably fine had I not broken that tip off. And if you look in the comments, somebody might actually have a real cool handy way to uh, fix that other than buying a new one. But these aren't terribly expensive. I guess it would have been easier swapping this out while I had the engine off too, probably. That's what I was talking about. Came loose in that other set of spark plug wires. See what broke off there. Alright, so to kind of recap on everything before we try to kick this thing off, because I think we got it to the point where hopefully we can get it to run. We started with the free engine. We knew it was free, that it would turn over. Ran when parked. Of course, they always say that. But listen, if you're going to get into a ran when parked, I promise you, it's not just the carburetor that needs cleaned. It's not just the starter solenoid that needs replaced. It's always something else. If it was easy to fix, they would have fixed it, and they wouldn't be selling it to you ran when parked. So we knew we were taking something on, but we knew the engine was free. We worked our way through. We figured out some of the wire connections were bad. We figured out that one relay was bad. We got that swapped. Then we figured out that the starter was bad because the Bendix was all rusted on the spindle or however you want to say it. It wasn't going to shoot out and engage in the flywheel. And although we probably could have cleaned it, we decided since the access is poor, we went ahead and put a new one on. We got that going. And then we figured out some of the wiring problems. We put a new ignition switch on. We ended up with no spark. We worked our way through, fixed some of the harnesses put new spark plug wires on, put a new fuel pump on, ended up being that ignition switch that was bad, which is why we're getting the no spark issue. And I think at this point we're ready, hopefully, to try and spin this thing over with our homemade ignition until the new switch, replacement switch, comes in. I just want to eliminate the fuel system just for the sake of starting it. It's not pulling any fuel, the choke is uh, closed up there. I can see that seems to be working fine. All right, we'll try this. I got a, whatever. Fingers crossed here. That's exciting. But it's the first time that engine's made a noise in a long time, so that's encouraging. I got 
got something weird going on back here with the drive shaft. Oh, we're getting close. The gas is all the way here. She ought to be doing something by now. If the carburetor was working right, I would think. What do we think? A little bit more brake cleaner down the holes there? Oh, we could try her once. Twice, maybe even. I think we're going to have a runner on our hands, and I'm pretty excited about it. So the fuel is getting all the way up to the carburetor, which is awesome, and with a little brake cleaner down the holes, she fires up. She doesn't run for long because it runs out of that brake cleaner pretty quick as it burns it off, and it's not pulling that fuel through the carburetor. So we got something going on there as far as the fuel issue goes. But I've got a little bit of the case of what we like to call the optimism. I think we're going to get her running out of this, and I'm pretty excited. But I wish I had time to mess with the carburetor today, but I just simply don't. Hope you guys are enjoying the channel. I'm excited about this 318. And by the way, I mentioned Neil Kof a few, a few times. If you're not watching Neil Kof Dig Drive DIY, you ought to be. The guy's got a lot of great stuff going on. His 318 Dream Garden Tractor build was phenomenal series. And now he started on a swimming pond. And if I know Neil like I think I do, it's going to be one of the best. And I'm not exaggerating. Coolest, nicest, probably most elaborate swimming ponds on YouTube. So make sure you hop over and check them out. He's kind of an inspiration for finally picking up this 318. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but he's definitely the inspiration for it. I put about 15 seconds worth of thought into it for a really good outro, and this is what I came up with. 